I'm sure you've felt the feeling of being overwhelmed by the sheer volume of information you encounter on a daily basis. Be it bits of information that you need to remember for work, ideas that you encounter, your own ideas, stream of consciousness, perhaps there's an interesting article you read, maybe you came across something that you think might be useful later on but you don't know where to store it. These are old problems that far predate computers or any productivity YouTube channel. But prominent thinkers such as Isaac Newton, Leonardo da Vinci, Marcus Aurelius, all had books that they stored information in that would allow them to reuse that information at later stages. Now, in a lot of productivity YouTube spaces, you'll see videos that promise how you can remember everything that you ever read. This is not going to be one of those type of videos. Instead, by the end of this video, I hope you'll understand the value of having a commonplace book and also how you can use LogSeq to build a digital equivalent for yourself. So what is a commonplace book? It sounds like a fancy term to get you to buy a Moleskine notebook. Well, that's not the case. It's the original building a second brain that has become such a common feature of personal knowledge management circles. Ryan Holiday, the author of The Obstacle is the Way and Ego is the Enemy, defines a commonplace book as a central resource or repository for ideas, quotes, anecdotes, observations, and information you come across during your life and didactic pursuits. The purpose of the book is to record and organize these gems for later use in your life, in your business, in your writing, speaking, or whatever it is that you do. But why do you need a commonplace book? Ryan Holiday is a professional writer and author, so obviously he needs this sort of resource. But what about you? Think about it. You likely write and speak for a living too, be it research papers, memos, emails, project documents, and you speak in meetings, in brainstorming circles, or in conversations with friends. All of these activities are somehow encompassed in your daily life. Having a resource of snippets that you can build on is a simple life hack if ever there was one. The idea is you're not starting from a blank slate. You're starting from a digital memory bank that you've built up for yourself that you can then withdraw and shape these valuable nuggets from. These thoughts, ideas, nuggets, the personal wiki, it becomes the seeds of fruit which will hopefully emerge later in your life. Isaac Newton called it his waste book. Leo Tolstoy, Albert Einstein, Friedrich Nietzsche were all said to have kept one. Stoic philosophers Seneca and Marcus Aurelius encouraged keeping a journal of thoughts and meditations. Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau were taught at Harvard to keep commonplace books. But it also doesn't need to be for a special purpose. It might be like a random tidbit, like a reference number from a service call that we had with an agent that we just want to be able to refer back to later on. And it's this unstructured mess of ideas. Similarly, when we're taking ideas from others, it need not be in a structured order. Leonardo da Vinci spoke about his commonplace book as a collection without order, drawn from many papers which I have copied here hoping to arrange them later, each in its place, according to the subjects of which they treat. In an analog world, this is onerous and messy, but LogSeq takes it digital. These are my professional journals and notebooks, which I've been keeping for many years now, since about 2011. I still take notes on paper, but not so regularly. Now, the problem with these is that whenever I want to go find information, it is buried deep within here, and I'm not sure where to go and look. It doesn't come up when I search things, you know, it's analog, it's paper. But LogSeq has been helping me to write and slowly integrate and build this personal knowledge wiki, which has become useful in so many different ways. So we're going to get into what you should plant in your LogSeq commonplace book and also why LogSeq is so beneficial for this use case. Now, the reason I use the word plant there is because I think about personal knowledge management as a set of five P's, planning, plowing, planting, propagating, and probing. Now, these five Ps are available in LogSeq Mastery, Workflows and Systems, and a little bit more of expansion on all of them. And I'll show you a little bit of a picture from the course later on. But planting is really when I'm capturing the materials, where I'm storing the information for myself. So I think about these four different types of planting, reference materials, source-based writing, free-form thinking, and and writing and then project-based thinking and writing. And the first one here is reference materials. And this is building a repository of information for yourself. Is it a code repository? Is it a repository of links? Is it pictures that you might want to get back to? There's so many different things that you can build in LogSeq. I don't want to define it, but I'm going to look at a couple of examples here. The first example I'm going to show is when I was migrating to Hugo. So I moved from Ghost to a static site generator with Hugo, 
And if I open this up in the right sidebar, I now have all my content related to Hugo. Let me shift click that. So I have seven linked references in my database. So in my daily journal, I would just say link to Hugo and then I would put information in there. So not ordered in any way, but I can go and filter this information by using that little filter button up here. And then I can then say, one thing I know that I struggled with was images. So if I go to images, I can find all the reference code for images. There we go. And I've organized that nicely there. Another nice feature here is that you have code mirror, which enables you to define the language that you're entering the code in, and then it will render with that syntax. And that is, if I go escape here, it's using those slashes and then markdown. So very nice for code. And I'll, I'm sure a lot of people will benefit from that. You can then also query for just this um, in your search term. So if you're looking for a specific um, coding language, you can use that in your query. Um, let's look at some low code stuff that I wanted to do. Again, this was just like random stuff that I've inputted in my database. And it was just a nice picture which explains how low code works. And then some article that spoke a little bit about low code and the differences between low code and no code. And a cool picture that I found that was related to, to low code. So random, not structured information. The final example here is fonts. When I was working on the video now, I wanted to use a different font guide. And I went and looked at these nice fonts references and this link to content that I'd stored before. And there's a whole bunch of information here on just fonts and, and thinking to Medium, you know, where lots of people read their articles, what are some of their guides? And then I've entered this information here so that I can remember the sizes. So nice to just dump information in and then find it by using your filters later on. The second thing I want to look at is source-based writing. So taking notes on any content. And I made a joke about this when I presented early thoughts on this. It's how I do my hoarding in LogSeq. So the idea that we shouldn't be collectors of information, we should be connectors of information. We all like to collect information, read articles, take notes and highlights. Well, maybe not all of us, but I'm sure that if you're watching this video, you felt the inclination to do that. And this is the way that I write in LogSeq. So I take, I organize my sources underneath a standard metadata template, which enables me to find them easily later on by triangulating from different points. So was it a video? Who was the author? I can find those different points um, or who was the producer and find the information that I want later on. So some examples that I want to look at here, Fireship is a great YouTube channel and I've learned a lot by watching his videos and there's a whole bunch of things that I just wanted to remember here, you know, that I saw little clips in his video that I thought, oh, that would be interesting. So for instance, LLMs, there was something about which jobs would be impacted and what would not be impacted. So I just, I've taken these little screenshots and I've added them into LogSeq. And a very helpful um, shortcut for that is Windows Shift S. And then I can just take a picture like that and then paste it over here. So that's what I do a lot, but let me delete that now. And then also my articles repository, if I just shift click and open that in the right sidebar, you can see I've got 333 linked references in here. And basically I, when I read an article, I, I read it in Omnivore, I make highlights and notes in Omnivore, and then I automatically bring that across and then I will write my observations here. So this is one of those reasons why it's nice to have it in an outline and or in a block form and not in a page itself. So every article comes in as a block. This is the block headline. And then I've got this metadata, which is entered as block properties. And then I've got all the information, um, either the highlights or my own notes from those sources. So a really nice way to just consolidate all your writing in one place. Next up is freeform thinking and writing. And this is your journal or stream of consciousness. And as I've written there, my personal journal entries often include a mix of daily reflections, emotions, observations, future plans. And I've developed a system of tags which help me to organize that information and retrieve it later on. 
So an example that I want to look at here is the 20th of February. I've obviously gone and looked at this day and found that it was safe. So I indent things underneath my journal and I've written a whole bunch of things here. And yeah, I start, <laughs> I mean, it's just, again, random things and nothing like super important for, for me to remember, but I've just taken a log of, of my thoughts and, you know, Sometimes I never look at these things again. Other times I'm like, oh, wow, this was useful. Um, so yeah, just helps me to get my thinking onto a page and not have this mess of thoughts in my head. And the last example here is project-based thinking and writing. So professional workflows, note-taking, meeting notes, decision tracking. You can do this all in Logseek. And again, I've got standard metadata templates that I use for meeting notes and my decision tracking and all my draft writing happens in Logseek. Important emails, video scripts, anything that like I'm fleshing out, it all happens in Logseek. So if I go and look at my writing dashboard, shift click right, I've got pages with draft status and it's a little bit compressed here, but these are all queries and I've got blocks tagged with draft as well. So yeah, these are all the things that I'm working on and it's been very helpful for me to have a consolidated place to just dump information and then reuse it later on. Now, when it comes to storing your information digitally, it really is the ease of retrieval that is the defining factor in how you use your information. And this is why we have this meme, which came out a few years ago, which talks about the midwit curve. And on the left, we have Apple Notes. And on the right, we have Apple Notes, the Jedi using Apple Notes. And in the middle, we've got the person overthinking it and trying to build systems to like store all the information. And you can see Rome Research and Obsidian and Notion and all the different things there. And the reason that this meme exists is because I think at least if you have good search in Apple Notes and you have a good system for storing keywords, you can easily find information that you need at a later stage. Now, why does this make Logseek any different in this context? I'm gonna look at a few reasons why I think it, you know, you can do Apple Notes, but I think Logseek really helps in a long-term setting. So the benefit for Logseek for me, and, and the really, this was the first one that changed the game for me, is this frictionless input. The idea that you can just dump everything in one place and then reorganize it later. So the daily journal first approach and also the outliner is what really facilitates this, you know, just little blocks here. And going back to my Hugo example, you can see that I'm entering all that information on these daily pages. And it doesn't matter where they are, I can easily find them later. And you can see here what I mean by the easy organization, or let me actually just go to this next point here, the easy organization, backlinks and indentation allow you to add this minimum structure that is enabling you to resurface it. And if I go here and let me filter all the things, or let me just filter for another one now, which I see there, YAML. You can see there that in on April 25th and on April the 13th, I talked about different things uh, that related to Hugo YAML. And I'm just indenting the information underneath there. So it's actually not that much indentation there. So if I go back to my images one, um, to, to images, you can see there's Hugo, images so then i can filter for those indentations um, and even if it's on the same line i can filter but i like to add that little bit of structure that i know later on i'm building the structure to filter the other thing which is great is the easy manipulation of information by dragging and dropping and i can literally click on that and move that across there and then also use shortcuts and move it up and down and let me move it back and i can say escape to select the full block cut and then pasting back here in my indentation. So really nice to manipulate that information. Then retrieval. I've, I've showed this example here and how I can use the filters, but I also have queries. So if I close, or if I minimize this over here with this little arrow, I've got this query for text. And when I was actually building this section, I knew that I'd made a tweet on this previously, but I couldn't remember what uh, where it was. I didn't have to remember because I can just build a query which says, and it's a Twitter thread, which is something which I've built into my database. And I knew that I'd use the term nonlinear because this is a nonlinear interaction of, in of information. And there we go. I didn't even 
need to have um, the, the text search component there because this is, if I look at the, the query itself, it's, it's a quotation mark, so it's looking for text. I have it, I've added it in the title there. So this is the Twitter thread that I was looking for, and this helped me to write this over here. The next point is multimedia inputs. So um, you've seen me add pictures, you can add full videos, you can embed YouTube videos if that's the way that you like watching YouTube videos. I don't, I like watching it in YouTube itself and taking notes separately. Audio, PDFs, all accessible here. And then longevity and ease of access. So if you have been an Evernote user, you'll know that you are pretty locked into their format. Um, the exports are, I think, I think they might be doing exports now, but I'm not sure. This is local first, so it's stored on my PC, the notes are stored in Markdown, and it's available offline. However, the next point there is that they are syncing services. So you can use SyncThing, you can use iCloud if you are an, an iOS-Mac user, and that enables you to sync your, your notes across different devices, and that means that you can look at them on your phone, your tablet, and that's been pretty cool for me at various different points to just surface information when I didn't have my PC. And if you are a LogSeq supporter, you also get access to Sync, which is available for about $5 a month. I wanted to add some quick thoughts on organization and structuring because this is a question that a lot of people have and it's something that a lot of people struggle with when they start using LogSeq. And again, I'm gonna to look to a quote from Ryan Holiday. I get a lot of emails from people asking me what categories I organize my notes in. Guess what? It doesn't matter. The information I personally find is what dictates my categories. Your search will dictate your own. Focus on finding good stuff and the themes will reveal themselves. Now, this again is why some people refer to the Apple Notes meme because it's all about search and it's all about how you structure that information and how you build information incrementally. Over time, your ideas will emerge from the bottom up. And I know this can sound almost arbitrary and frustrating, but you will see it in practice. And I'll encourage you to watch this video from Nick Milo, which I'll link to below, which talks about this idea emergence. And it's how friction points in your own workflows and your own like, mental space drive your note evolution. Structure needs to evolve with your database as your database grows. So make sure to allow for this ad hoc emergence and ability to restructure. This is why I also really like the blocks approach, just this ability to reconfigure information and, and drag and drop things around. It's really great. The other thing about premature structuring or adding too much structure up front is that it imposes a rigidity which doesn't allow you to use information in different ways later on. So more structure is not always better. Be aware of this temptation and Really backlinking and indentation is often sufficient structure to be able to find the information that you need later on. So that's a quick look at how you can use LogSeq to build a digital commonplace book for yourself. This is really the project of a lifetime. It's not something which is going to fade away or change when you change apps, or hopefully, but something that will build a personal repository that you can use and grow your own knowledge over years to come. So think about it in, in long terms, and if you want to get more information about LogSeq and personal knowledge management, I'd encourage you to look at my course, LogSeq Mastery. And all of these principles are discussed in depth in there. I've built workflows and visualizations that can help you just think about that. This section was inspired from my section on planting, which talks about those four areas, and then also has got all the workflows that are related to that, if I just scroll down. And that's really part of this five P's, which has got a lot more information, and this is only in one module. So this is just a quick look at how you can look at planting. I speak about outliners, the benefit of outliners, the benefit of links. I've invested a lot of time in making LogSeq Mastery the absolute powerhouse of information that will enable you to build personal knowledge management systems that will last for a long time. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope that you can get started with building a commonplace book for yourself in LogSeq.